Hi well, Janusz, thanks for joining us today. Um, if possible, I'd like to start just by getting you to briefly introduce yourself and talking to me a little bit about your role and what you're working on this, at this moment. Sure, uh, my name is Janusz Perge, I'm a principal data scientist at CVS slash Aetna. We uh, create uh, machine learning models to predict an expensive clinical outcome such as what's the likelihood that you would have, for instance, uh, back surgery next year? What's the likelihood you would have kidney failure next year? What's the likelihood that, um, that you would have heart failure next year? Okay, nice. And so what are you currently working on at the moment, project-wise? So currently uh, we are actively involved with, uh, with, a, with a large uh, CVS program uh, to, uh, to manage chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a program that just went live last month in April. Nice. And um, so it's, it's very new, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's dynamically growing. Sure. And uh, we are the ones who are creating the uh, analytics uh, uh, to, uh, to support the program. Sure. So uh, as an example, uh, we created a model around uh, kidney failure, mm -hmm. which, is, um, um, which means people who, uh, whose kidney fail, mm -hmm. Uh, they uh, they need a subsequent dialysis, and then from there on, they would be on dialysis for the rest of their lives, or until sure. until they get uh, a kidney transplant. The uh, the program is trying to uh, to better manage those people who are higher risk uh, or who already have chronic kidney disease, mm -hmm. and um, and some of the analytics uh, products we create and, and the models we create are used by the program to uh, first to uh, identi identify those people who, are, uh, who would benefit the most from such sure. a program. And second, if they are enrolled in the program, uh, how likely they are going to have some, some kind of an unwanted uh, severe medical event, such as having a, a kidney failure. Sure. So once we know this, then mm -hmm. those people, uh, so this information could, could help care managers to, uh, to tailor their intervention according to, uh, to the needs of this person. Sure. And if possible, could you just explain a few of the ways that you're using deep learning at the moment in that current work? Yeah, so, uh, so we have tried various different models. Sure. And, uh, and of course, there is not such a, there's no, there is no silver bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, each model has its advantages and disadvantages. So uh, we are uh, using multiple models in one of them, uh, or, or one types of models are deep learning models, uh, which are uh, typically better uh, in terms of performance. They also, um, they also uh, provide additional insight that we may not get from, from simpler models. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but again, it all depends on the business case and, uh, and, and various other factors, which, which makes the most ideal model for, for, a, for a particular modeling objective. So you're obviously working on sort of clinical optimization. I know you've already touched on it slightly, but could you give me a little bit more of an insight into that? Yes, exactly. So, um, so CVS has a number of uh, clinical programs to improve the health of some of our members with chronic conditions. Sure. Uh, one of them I already mentioned, for instance, having a chronic kidney disease. These are typically um, conditions that take a long uh, time to develop. Uh, they are high cost both for, them, for our members and as well as for us. And, uh, and they are detrimental to life. Sure. So, um, so these programs are, are targeting uh, these members who are, who are in need of, uh, like who, who, may, who may benefit from certain help. Sure. And, um, and the assumption is that by, by providing such need, uh, we, could, uh, we could improve their health as well as cut healthcare costs. Nice. Now, where the, where the analytics comes in is, um, is that we could provide um, models that would, that would point out who are those people who are in the highest need or who, benefit, uh, who would benefit the most sure. from such a program. So healthcare is one of the areas we're going to see sort of large positive impact in regards to AI in society. Um, but how are you ensuring that uh, the work you're doing is fair and transparent? Yeah, so uh, transparency is, um, is a very important issue sure. and, and, but to the extent depends on the domain. Mm -hmm. in, in healthcare, transparency is, is especially important because 
uh, when we are dealing with people's lives and we are trying to, uh, to create models which would have an impact on people's health. Sure. It's, um, it's, it's a number one priority to, uh, to create models that are, are transparent. Sure. So, uh, for instance, uh, using deep learning models is, it, I think, one of the res uh, like one one reason why um, why our field might be slightly resistant to uh, to deep learning models is is the notion that these models are less transparent. Sure. Now, um, it's um, it's it's somewhat relative because because uh, because even simpler models may be less transparent. Even simpler mm -hmm. models might be still black boxes. Sure. But, but it is true that, uh, that the, the, the more complexity we have in a model, the, uh, the more difficult it is to explain how that model works and how that model generates an output. Sure. So, so there are a number of ways to, uh, to, uh, to create more transparent deep learning models. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's also very important to, uh, to do our due diligence when we are creating a model to, uh, to, uh, to fully understand what are the main drivers of that model. Sure. And, um, and no matter what, we need to do this because, uh, because some of the programs are operating on a, on a much, on a long time scale yep. involving uh, significant financial investments. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we, we do have to, uh, to make sure that our models, uh, that we fully understand what are the main drivers of those models. Sure. And I imagine it's very important for you guys at CVS to work very closely with clinic, um, clinicians. Is that something that you sort of are very keen on doing and have been doing uh, throughout your work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so the the program I mentioned earlier, the uh, the the kidney care program, uh, is is a great example of this. Sure. That um, I had the opportunity to interact with a number of uh, of uh, clinical experts, mm -hmm. and uh, these interactions are extremely fruitful. Sure. in terms of uh, creating better uh, predict prediction models. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, uh, you, could, you, could, uh, you could consider deep learning as a model where you don't really need to do um, feature engineering. Sure. The model sort of figures out what are the most relevant features and, uh, and then you are done. But yeah. in reality, uh, you are doing much better if you, um, if you also uh, have clinical input, mm -hmm. so you can um, you can find creative ways to uh, to bring in additional uh, additional information sure. that would improve your model performance. Yeah, and obviously these projects are probably very long term uh, in regards to time scale. But where do you see this project being in say the next twelve months? So the project just started about a month ago. So sure. uh, uh, we are. Uh, we already have a number of uh, centers across the country which are actively recruiting uh, patients. Yep. Uh, I envision uh, the, uh, the scale of this project to increase so that like, more people would be involved uh, more um, uh, across, across the country. And, uh, and we are in the process of creating more and more predict prediction models sure. with various aspects of uh, kidney disease. So um, even if we are just thinking about like one model to uh, say predict uh, kidney failure, mm -hmm. that's actually not one model. We could think about a host of models uh, centered on this problem. Sure. Uh, these models could be predicting on, on different time intervals. Mm -hmm. They could be uh, they could be operating on on, di on different segments uh, sure. of, of people, mm -hmm. or, uh, or 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 they might have slightly modified uh, outcome definitions. And those are not no longer the same model. Sure. Uh, what, what kind of other industries do you see this project benefiting the most? So, um, so in, in, you mean clinical optimization and the types of methodology that we are using? Sure. So if, I, if I'm thinking about... So I think what, what, what would make our, our sort of approach or technology uh, transferable to other domains depends on on the type of data that mm -hmm. is used. So our, our data is typically transactional data, which is a person has a medical history, like medical events over time. So we, have, we, have, we may have millions of people with, with billions of medical events over time. Sure. So this kind of transactional data, uh, the methods that we are using on this data set would directly transfer to, uh, to other domains where, where the data set is somewhat similar. So I'm, I, I could think about 
uh, financial services, sure. um, I don't know, credit card information or like or ex expenditure where um, where people have to identify a certain segment of um, of, uh, of people and uh, and target those people with, with various types of uh, outreach or yeah or uh, offerings. So, what kind of advice would you give to someone uh, looking to come into the career in the intersection of AI and healthcare? Well, my advice is that it's it's a dynamically expanding field. Sure. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities, mm -hmm. especially uh, because uh, healthcare is 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 such a it's such a significant uh, domain. Sure. And uh, compared to uh, and until recently, we we didn't really have uh, well managed uh, large databases. Uh, we didn't have access to uh, computational resources, uh, but but this is really changing a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, compared to uh, to some other fields in, in in data science, which are somewhat more advanced, mm -hmm. uh, like um, like Google, Facebook. Uh, and like online retail and so on sure. that um, that are in, in terms of machine learning they are somewhat more advanced mm -hmm. but um, but it's, it's it's really just happening now in healthcare sure. so uh, so I, I feel there are a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. I um, we have a lot of, lot of job open, openings at the company uh, sure. and my team is hiring uh, I uh, I had the opportunity to interact with a lot of uh, talented people, and uh, and many people are coming from many different uh, uh, di uh, backgrounds. So uh, computer science or or, um, or or some some health uh, related fields or uh, or uh, people with STEM backgrounds, and uh, because it's an intersection. Uh, Everybody uh, with di very different backgrounds could actually find their their own niche. Sure. Okay. And just before I let you go, um, we want to ask you where we can keep up to date with your work uh, and where we can find everything about the work you're doing, whether it be social media or otherwise. Yeah. Um, people can email me. Uh, people can find me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess these these are the the easiest ways to uh, to reach me. Sure. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time, and uh, and we look forward to seeing yeah. your work going forward. I thank I thank you. Thank you. Thank you.